Hello, welcome to Off The Beaten Pot, bringing great food back to the great outdoors. In today's video, we are looking at 10 eco camping tips. <laughs> 10 different ways and slightly different changes in our habits that we can make to alleviate our stresses on the environment and on nature, the same nature that we love and adore so much. Before we get fully into this video, I'm excited to announce I have a few dates ahead in which I will be making it out into the great outdoors. Um, me and my dad are teaming up again and currently waiting for Trev from Summit or Nothing to let me know when he will be free for an outing. The good news about this is I will be doing a mini series in which I go through my whole process of choosing where we're going to walk, having a look at the terrain, uh, the water sources, uh, coming up with a meal plan, then going to the shops and buying it on a budget, or I'll be comparing it against what, what you typically spend on those tear open plastic things. So make sure you ding the bell uh, to keep notified about all my upcoming videos, especially that series, and uh, give this video a like and help the YouTube algorithm send these videos out to the people that you think might need to see it. So getting into it, and this is in no particular order, number one is make your gear last. Every season, every month or every week it seems that there's a brand new fresh product on the market and a lot of them are exciting and we want to try them all. Uh, the reality is, I suppose, ask yourself, do you need it? Do you really want it? Because by making your gear last, you, you're going to get better at the gear you have, you're going to enjoy using it more. And I've fallen into the trap so many times of just uh, buying something that looked the part that were actual crap, waste of money. And the reality is that resources and effort were put into mining, manufacture and shipping. Buy gear to last and a good way of doing that is buying second hand. Lots of sites such as eBay, Facebook Marketplace, your local buy and sell sites etc and you can pick up some absolute bargains without uh stuff that's already exists stuff that already made for example i've got this my um msr pocket um something or other uh fancy bugger and it's second hand and it was roughly uh, just over half price of what it would have cost new and you know works a treat oh <laughs> melting my mic <laughs> So yeah, buy second hand where you can. I've sort of skipped, that was number three um, written down. So number two, don't buy cheap sh from China. There are loads of items out there that they seem not very expensive and all it's really doing is taking away an inconvenience that someone else has created, a problem that never existed that someone's solving with an item, often single use or, or you realize you get it and the problem never existed. Um, clever marketing, isn't it? Uh, next point is stop buying single-use plastic meals. They're really convenient. I do. I get it. And you can just get a nicer experience by not always going with the single-use tear-open packs. They're really convenient. And I, I truly believe that we're being sold convenience as a way of, well, ultimately, not, not being great for the environment. These single-use plastic bags, these tear-open packs, okay, it keeps you warm and it fills you up and it's nice enough, but it's not excellent food and it's really not difficult to attain that for um, as much inconvenience or as much convenience as using one of these uh, tear open plastic bags. Two, even if they say they're recyclable, how many people do you know go out onto the trail and one, find a recycling bin anywhere nearby, even in uh, you know a lot of um, national parks I've been to around the world, the, um, the bin is just a, a big, long, long, long hole into the ground, which is sad and needs addressing. But not many people want the inconvenience of having to sort out their rubbish. But when you get back from your trek, you've got to unpack your bag, dry your tent maybe, put your clothes in the, dry, uh, in the washer, and while they're spinning round, it's easy, you just get, get your dry bag. This is what I use as my bin. And inside I've got two liners, one's for my rubbish rubbish, and number two is for my recycling. When I get home, the rubbish bin goes in the rubbish and the recycling gets sorted. It's no big issue, really. So I would say that that is quite an important point, quite an easy one. Stop buying single-use tear-open plastic meals or tell me a company that absolutely goes to the next level. So next on the list, reduce your meat consumption. Now, I'm not here to tell you what to do. It's just, these are just 
things you can do. So by reducing meat consumption, uh, you reduce your impact on the environment. And there are plenty of incredible vegetarian options out there. I still eat meat, uh, but I would say about 60 to 70% of my meals are vegetarian. Um, and there are some incredible meat alternatives out there. And a lot of them you can put into your meal and the flavor comes from everything else you add. If you know, I'm not saying don't eat meat, I'm saying just reduce your meat consumption because uh, just feed the amount of feed and water needed to keep cattle and sheep and other animals alive. It's quite a lot. And the more of us that eat more meat, the more land is needed for this. Okay, I've just covered it a little bit. Recycle when you get home. It's not hard just to take your, take your bin, put um, two liners in there, put rubbish goes in one liner and your recycling goes in the other. And it's a simple fix. Even if you don't do any, any others on this list, that is you know, one of the ones that is so easy to do and does make a, an immediate impact uh, to your environment and where you spend your time outdoors. Now we're getting on to other things. Some of us might be into the, uh, in a position where we can financially support a rewilding project. And if you can't financially support it, maybe you can support it with your time volunteering or with uh, very least spreading the word. The word. There are some uh, rewilding projects uh, near me at the moment. Uh, do your research just because somebody shouts, we're doing a rewilding project. It might not actually be the right re rewilding project for the local area. Rewilding is a, such a solid thing that we have to do. Moving forward as a species, we need more wild spaces. So if you can get behind in one way or another, a rewilding project that is an excellent thing you can do for the environment um yep so fund charities that's another one um i've for years now i think the first chugger charity mugger i ever got accosted by was friends of the earth and i've been paying um not much to be fair but i've never gone less than three pounds a month uh, paying to friends of the earth and they got me when i think oh, i was working in leicester so i must have been 16 so they've had like 21 years worth of three pounds a month minimum from me and it, it will make a difference so if you can yeah, give to charity you can even give it to uh, charities and groups that um, clear up and raise awareness within the national park or area that you spend most of your time outdoors and lastly number 10 is get involved in non-violent action i'm a big fan of non-violent action because ultimately uh, especially in the uk we've got extinction rebellion and they do it en masse in a very disruptive way whether you agree or disagree with what they do all the time, their non-violent action has led to policy change in government that has then moved on to uh, positively affect our environment. And that can only be a good thing if we're going out into nature to enjoy this environment um, and non uh, violent action has been a big part in causing this policy shift then that is no bad thing but if you're like me and you're a bit of a wimp and you don't want to get involved directly in this action then again you can offer that support whether it be sharing the message if you believe in it and if you can uh, finance somewhat that's an option yeah spread the message or volunteer your time so that was it for that, a little bit of a, an off cooking rant, I suppose, but a rant nonetheless. I've been just thinking a lot about it recently and, you know, just trying to, I really feel that a lot of plastic waste becomes from tackling inconvenience that we've been sold as an inconvenience when really it's not. The main gripe for me, as you're probably aware if you follow this channel, is the single use tear open plastic packaging for this adventure food and you know a lot of that food gets left on the top of mountains for convenience as well meaning as you want to be some of it ends up within the environment and even before all that the manufacture of these plastics and the shipping of these plastics it all adds to a bigger picture of environmental impact and one that we should all be striving to reduce as outdoors men women and other we all should do our utmost to preserve the outdoors um, because one day if we keep going at the rate we are uh, it's going to get rarer and rarer to enjoy reasonable weather in the outdoors Thing, things have to change and it's a bit of a rant and i feel strongly about it but i would love for all of us to carry on going out enjoying nature while it's still there so hopefully these 10 tips can help somewhat and they might not have been what you're expecting 
but nothing's necessarily uh, an easy fix on this. So once again, thank you very much. If you made it this far, thank you so much for your time. If you have any other tips or hints or rants or raves that you want to leave in the comments below, please go ahead. Um, let's open this up for debate, discussion, uh, build the community, teach me something keep getting ourselves outside into a healthier version of nature that we're currently heading for. Cheers and gone. Enchanté.